Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stephanie and today I have another fiber video for you. You might remember a few videos ago, or I'm not sure it might be the last video, I can't remember which one I posted last. I showed you how to spin an art bat to retain the texture in that bat. Well, I finished spinning that bat and here it is. See, we preserved all of that beautiful texture by core spinning it. That means we took the bat and we wrapped it around a commercially, commercially prepared yarn, okay? So that's our initial, that's our first spin. Now I want to ply that um, core spun yarn in order to give it a little bit more stability. You can use art yarns as a single, but um, this one, because it's so loosely wrapped around the core yarn, I'm going to ply it just to make sure that the yarn does hold together. So what I'm going to do is take this yarn that I've already spun and I am going to ply it. I've already got it set up on my Lazy Kate here. Ply it with this thin alpaca. This is yarn that I originally purchased um, to use on my rigid heddle loom, but it turns out I am much more of a spinner and knitter than I am a weaver. So I've still got this beautiful yarn and um, so I'm gonna use it to ply. Before I show you how to set everything up on the wheel, I want to talk a little bit about why I chose this yarn because I think some channels are really great on giving you the mechanics of how to spin, but they don't tell you why they've made the artistic choices that they've made. So this yarn, it's all about preserving the texture. So I want something that will almost blend in and look invisible with the yarn when I ply it. That's why I'm not using something bold. That's why I'm choosing something that will just almost disappear. So you're not going to see a lot of this when I'm plying. I am purposely doing that. I do not want this second yarn to be a design element in my finished yarn. So that's why I chose this, okay? So give me a minute, I'll get my wheel set up and we will get ready to ply. I'm back, I have my empty bobbin set up on my Spinolution Echo, and I have the Lazy Kate on the floor on my left, and on it you'll see both, here, let me get it set up here better. You see I have both the um, core spun yarn and the yarn I'm going to ply with. The way I have this set up is a little bit different than I normally do. Got it tangled here in that I have both um, the core spun yarn and the yarn I'll be plying it with on my Lazy Kate. Normally I would put one yarn on my left and one on my right, but that was because I never had a Lazy Kate before and I was having to improvise. So I'm going to try it this way. We'll see if it works. If it doesn't, we'll change the way we do it. That's the thing about spinning. Um, you try one thing and if it doesn't work, just do something else. It's about what's finding out, it's about, excuse me, it's about finding out what works for you. Okay, so first what we have to do is, as always, get the fiber onto the empty bobbin. So I have my leader set up here. What's great about the spin illusion for art yarns is that it has this hook here that you can also get it with an orifice, but I really like the hook. So it doesn't matter how thick my yarn is, it goes right through. So I'm gonna open my leader like this. I have both, both the plying yarn and the yarn to be plied in one hand. And I'm going to just slip both of them through the leader and as always, then fold it back on itself, okay? So now is when we are going to start treadling. And remember, we always spin clockwise or to the right, and we are going to ply counterclockwise or to the left. So we are going to start spinning. And I can tell already, I have a little bit too much pull on here, so I'm gonna loosen it. Um, 
you do not just like when you're spinning you don't want to spin too tight you do not want to ply too tightly either because what you'll be doing is completely unspinning your yarn and that's a problem especially in a core spun yarn so I'm releasing a little bit of this and I'm going to start off really slow okay the twist is coming in and I'm letting it go into the yarn and I could hold them I could hold the two yarns completely together like this but then they just, they wouldn't ply. They wouldn't, um, they are, you, both, you need them to work independently. And so if you held them together, they're just going to turn and they're not gonna really hold each other together to create that stability. So instead I keep it kind of like this in a Y and sometimes I'll keep just my index finger of my left hand between the two and I let it slowly go around and you can see it's creating some beautiful textures look at this isn't that lovely let me see if I can get you closer to see that isn't that beautiful so you see it's nice and even it's nice and even um, it and it's simple I'm keeping it simple because my rule when it comes to spinning art yarn or and look I want to show you what I'm doing here instead of just keeping my fingers through here one finger through I'm holding each one each yarn in a different hand okay but anyway back to what I was saying my rule when I am spinning something beyond just a typical yarn is that if I have, just got this twisted. If I have, I like to look at the texture, the color, and the technique that you're using to work with. So if any one of those is, let's say, beyond the norm, okay, so say you're spinning something with a very loud color or um, a colorway that is very busy then what I'm going to do typically, and this is just my style, you, you need to find your, you know, find your own. You don't have to do it this way. But what I'm going to do is then I will spin it very simply and ply it simply because the main element in that yarn is going to be the color. So I will keep the color and technique simple because remember, I'm, I'm or color, I will keep the texture and technique simple because remember I'm looking at three things. I'm looking at the color, the texture, and the technique. Okay, that's what I think about when I make my creative decisions regarding my yarn. So in this particular yarn, the texture was what I wanted to emphasize. So I'm keeping the spinning technique relatively simple. Also. The colors, you'll see, although there are multiple colors in this yarn, they are very muted, very soft, okay? So I'm downplaying both the color and the technique so that the texture can really shine, okay? That's how I make the decisions when it comes to how I'm going to spin something. At least that's one of the ways. But it, for me, honestly, it is the main way that I make the decisions. Now, what I wanna to talk to you about here, because we're plying, I'm trying to get this yarn onto the bobbin pretty quickly because I do not want to untwist it. So you see, I'm working pretty close. I'm working right here. See this yarn behind here has not been plied. I'm working right here close to the orifice so that I am not putting or untwisting too much of this yarn. Plying is a lot of fun for me because this is where the, the final stage of the yarn takes place and you really get to see what you've created here and it's a, it's a lot of fun, okay? Now, a few more things. This is a very simple ply. Whoops, I wanna show you something that is not necessarily good here, okay? There is this section here. I'm gonna try and bring it up closer. Where 
this section here. Okay, now that looks plied, right? Okay, but if you look closely right here and beyond, you can see that that alpaca yarn is just straight. And what's happened is that the, um, just like when we were core spinning, the um, textured yarn just sort of wrapped around it. Now that's okay, that's okay, but that's not what I want in here. I want a little more stability than that. So what I'm going to do, it's really simple, I'm just gonna unwind and I'm going to redo that part. Let me get this on too. Oops. Let me get back where I was. There we go, that's how we were going. Always make sure to keep track of the direction in which you are spinning. Okay, so I'm just gonna pay attention to this, undo it by twist, untwisting, okay? And it takes a little patience, and you don't have to do this. You could leave that element there. You could leave it there like that, but it's just not what I wanted. So what I'm gonna do is just take a minute or two over here so I don't tangle anything else. Hold it up, I'm kind of holding it up straight. I know you can't see very well what I'm doing. And the reason that happened is because I was having um, different Tech different tensions on my plying yarn and my spun yarn. I was, I had, um, I was holding the yarn I was plying with tighter than I was holding my other yarn. So now when I'm holding them the same, they're both twisting. One is not straight. The tension is even, and also, that can also happen, you see, I'm holding it in a fairly wide thing. When I do, when I close the yarn together, so if I hold it like this, I'm gonna get one technique where they're both moving together. If I close the amount of space between the two, then that's going to give you that straight, your, your um, plied yarn, or your plying yarn, is going to be pretty straight. And that's just not what I wanted to do here. So basically you just, for this technique, you're just gonna hold your two yarns kind of far out from each other in like a very wide Y and keep an even tension, work close to the orifice and work quickly so that you do not untwist your spun yarn watch your hooks there move it along when you need to and that's really all there is to it so remember wide Y let your yarns come together at the same pace same even tension on both your plying yarn and your spun yarn work close to the orifice and work quickly so that you do not untwist your spun yarn. That's all there is to it. So thank you for watching. I'm Stephanie Nipper. Please like and comment. It really helps me when you all comment because then my introverted self doesn't feel like I'm just out here talking to the wind. Look at this right now, guys. I want to show you this. almost looks like seashells. Isn't that pretty? That's what I'm wanting to preserve here. That is what we can see all the texture in here. The yarn is much more stable. It won't fall apart and it's going to make, we'll make something beautiful out of it. And that's what we all want to do after all, isn't it? Create something beautiful that wasn't here before.